Okay, hello, hello. Welcome back to the next lesson in SETA College's online intermediate lesson series. Thank you so much for coming to watch my lesson today. So I hope everyone here is, is very happy and very healthy and ready to learn some English. So if you have been with me day after day, lesson after lesson, then you know we have talked about a lot. We have talked a lot about grammar, a lot of vocabulary, and a lot of pronunciation and how to use all of those things. So I thought it's a good time to begin reviewing, talking about everything once again and putting everything together into these larger categories. So in my last lesson, I reviewed the present tenses. We talked about the present simple, the present continuous, the present perfect, and the present perfect continuous. So that's what we're going to do again today. We're going to review the next group of verb tenses all together. So I hope you're ready, because let's begin. So we're going to talk about the past tenses, all four of them together, uh, the differences between them, when to use them, all those sorts of things. That way, everything you can see all together here in this lesson. So let's start talking. Well, we're going to begin with the past simple. This is the one that I think you know the most about. So the past simple is just always to talk about events that are totally finished in the past. You know, something that happened in the past, it has no connection to now, nothing to do with now, and it's totally finished one event in the past. And you make this with the very familiar formula, subject, verb, ed. Of course, though, there are many, many irregular verbs for the past simple. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of work with the irregular verbs in later portion of the lesson. So if we think about this verb tense on a timeline, we've got the past, now, and the future. And we're just talking about that one point in the past. That's it. Just one event, one point in the past that is, you know, totally finished and done and all in the past. That's what we're thinking about with the past simple. So some examples. I ate, brec I ate eggs for breakfast. There we go. It's done. Uh, at breakfast this morning, I ate eggs. There's no, you know, no more information, uh, nothing about any other time or any other event, just that. Or David baked a cake this morning. Um, so we have that one event baked the cake. It all happened in the past. Uh, no other events, no other thoughts, just that. That's what the past simple is doing. We're looking into the past and talking about just one specific event and only that event. And as you will see when we go to the next verb tenses, all of the other uh, past tenses connect back to the past simple because that past simple is really your one point in time. What's another past tense? Well, we also talked about the past perfect. Um, so this one's a little more tricky than the other past tenses. So this is to talk about an event that happened before a different event in the past. If you remember, when we talked about the past simple before, I said that it is the past of the past. So that's kind of a, a, a trick you can use to think about this. So to make it, it's always subject plus had in the past participle. And of course, again, with the past participle, there are many irregular forms. And for this had, uh, this doesn't change. I, you, he, she, it, we, they, all the same had. But we do have a lot of contractions with this one. I'd, you'd, he'd, she'd, they'd, we'd. Um, it's very, very normal that we will use a contraction for this uh, auxiliary verb here. So if we think about that timeline, we've got the same as before, and we've got that point in the past. So we've got our, our past simple, our one event in the past. But with the past perfect, we're now going farther back. So I've got my point in the past, and now I'm talking about something that happened before that. So an example, I asked a, I asked a question when the teacher had finished talking. So here we have my question. I asked a question. And it happened here when the teacher 
had finished talking. So the teacher finished talking here, and then I asked my question. So that's what the past perfect is doing. It's always picking um, another action in the past and then talking about something before it, something, whatever happened before. And the past perfect event here, had finished, is always the thing that happened before. Um, and I can say it the other way around. The teacher had finished talking when I asked my question. So you can say it in either way, um, but the past perfect will always be the first thing in time. Um, and another thing that's important to say is that the past perfect usually happens with the past simple. They almost always come together. It's very difficult to use the past perfect totally alone. Um, because the past simple is your kind of your point in time. We always need some point in time to talk about before. You know, if I don't talk about my first point, how do I know what happened before? Um, so it's very important to use the past perfect with the past simple together. That way you always have the two so you know what is first and what happened before. All right. Well, another verb tense that we talked about is the past continuous. So the past continuous is a little different from the past perfect. So the past perfect is always about finished events, something that happened before, but it's finished. The past continuous is to talk about something that was in progress. So the past perfect and the past continuous are kind of opposite ideas, and they're working on opposite structures. So to make this, we use subject plus was, were. So now we've got auxiliary be instead of auxiliary have. And we have verb ing. So no irregulars here, which is very good. <laughs> Only the, the past participle has irregulars. Fortunately, the verb ing, totally the same. Um, and so if we think about this one on a timeline, we've got our past event because this is the same as the past perfect. We must have that one point in time as our, our focus. And now I'm talking about something that was in progress around it, something that was happening at the same time. So for example, Alex was riding the bus when his grandmother called. So here in this sentence we have he was riding the bus. So this was in progress when his grandmother called. Usually we're going to talk about the past continuous for interruptions. Uh, so the past continuous kind of has the idea that something was in progress, something was happening, and then it was interrupted uh, by another event. So that's always a good way to think about the past continuous. If you were doing something and then something else happened and it, it caused a change, that thing that you were doing is going to be past continuous the interruption is going to be past simple. So here again, we have the two working together. The past continuous is like the situation, what's happening, and then the past simple is that interruption, that change. My grandmother called past simple, so there's my interruption. I was riding the bus when she called my interruption. So that's really what we're doing with the past continuous. All right. Well, so those were the three that we talked about most in this intermediate series. So we talked about the past simple and then the past perfect and the past continuous kind of to, to, to work around the past simple. Um, there's actually another past tense. Um, and, and this other past tense is very important. And so I'm going to talk about it anyway. So I know I said this was a review lesson. Um, but I'm going to give a little bit of uh, additional new information because I think you can do it. I think you can, I think you can handle it. Um, so there's actually a past perfect continuous. Um, they actually always come in sets of four. So we have four past tenses, four present tenses, and then we'll, we'll get to the future tenses. They're a little different. Um, so what is the past perfect continuous? Well, this one is to talk about how long something took to happen before an event in the past. I know, that's strange. What does that mean? Um, so before we talk about what it means, let's see how to make it. 
So the past perfect continuous is a combination of the past perfect and the past continuous. Yeah, perfect continuous. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, we've got subject and had again. Now we have the the auxiliary as been, and then verb ing again. And we have the same contractions that we have here with she, he, they, we. Um, same contractions. Now we just add been and verb ing. So what is this really talking about? So here's your timeline, and here's our event in the past. So this is this is our one event in the past. Again, this is going to be the past simple. All of the past tenses work together with the past simple. So this past simple tense is your kind of point in time. Well, the past perfect is now talking about how long it took one event until this one happened. So the focus of this one is time, really. We're looking at this event in the past, how long it happened until this next event happened. So let's look at this example. We had been eating dinner for 20 minutes when the doorbell rang. So the focus of this past perfect continuous sentence is to say, so before the door, here's the doorbell rang. That's your, your point in time here. This is your past simple rang. And so here we have our ding dong. And then now the past perfect, we had been eating for 20 minutes. So here you're focusing on an event that happened before and the fact that it took 20 minutes until the next event happened. And so that's also what's very important about this is that uh, with the past perfect continuous, we'll also have four, uh, a lot of four sentences. So you remember our distinction of for and since? Um, well, for the past perfect continuous, you'll have lots and lots of for clauses because time is very important in this tense. It's almost always going to come together. You will use the past perfect continuous with some amount of time, almost always. And so that's how this one's working together. So if you think we have all four past tenses now, you have the past simple. That is your, your kind of reference, your anchor, your one point in time. And then the past perfect is just talking about something before. The past continuous is talking about something that was in progress around this point. And then the past perfect continuous is focusing on how much time it took this to arrive to this. And so all four of these work together to help describe different relationships in the past. Now a question you may ask is what's the difference then between the past perfect continuous and the past continuous? Um, and to be honest, they're very, very similar. But there is a slight difference between the two. So the past continuous focuses on two actions happening at the same time in the past. Um, so, well, I, I shouldn't say two actions. It's one action that was in progress in the past. But when you speak with the past continuous, the idea is that your past continuous action was at the same time as your other past simple action. You know, they're, they're, they're in progress. The, my grandma called. Uh, while I was riding the bus. So, you know, it's happening together. She called, I was riding the bus. And so really, the focus of the past continuous is interruption. One thing is in progress in the past, and then another past event interrupted it. That's really the idea for this one. On the other hand, the past perfect continuous focuses on time. It's always about how long. So with the past perfect continuous, instead of things happening together, we now have that past perfect idea. So one happened first for an amount of time until we got to this next event. So really here the focus is on time. So that's really the biggest difference between the two. The past continuous works together with the past simple at the same time. The past perfect um, works, or the past perfect continuous works before, and your focus is on that time. How much time was it from this event to this event in the past? So let's look at an example. 
I was cooking dinner when my mother asked me a question. So here the idea is that, you know, I'm, I'm cooking, I'm stirring, I, I'm, I was cooking dinner when I hear my name, oh, and my mother asked me a question. So this all happened in the past. How about this one, though? Let's compare. We had been waiting for three hours when the train arrived. So now we have a similar situation, except I'm focusing now on the three hours. So I was standing at the station waiting and waiting and waiting. And I had been waiting for three hours before the train arrived. So now I have one and two instead of number this example here where they're happening together. And that's why the time here is so important for the past perfect continuous. Because if you do not use time, use the past continuous. So when you are writing, when you are speaking, if you're describing past events and you don't care about time, use the past continuous. You do not need time. But if you want to emphasize how long something happened in the past before something else, that's when you want to use the past perfect continuous because that's what you want to emphasize, that time. So um, if I remove time here, let's say I, I, I remove this for three hours, I can say we had been waiting for, we had been waiting when the train arrived. That's not a very natural sentence. Um, it, it, we always need that time for the past perfect continuous because if I remove the time, it would be more natural to say, we were waiting when the train arrived. And now it's more natural because now it's not about time, it's about process. So that's why time is so important for this. And that's really the difference between the two is your focus on interruption or your focus on time. Okay, so let's try to practice this. So I'm going to show you some sentences. So we've got four tenses to choose. You can choose the past simple, the past perfect, the past continuous, or the past perfect continuous. And I have, I think, six sentences for you to complete. Um, one thing that I want to make very clear is that all of these sentences work together. So it's one after another um, because it's one complete story. So they always go back. It's one, one story. Um, this is important because these tenses never happen, you know, alone. It's never just one and then one and then one. Um, they all work together to make a story. So you'll always have them, you know, together with the past simple to, to tell some event, some story in the past. So let's give it a go. Our first example. When I woke up, it, and the verb is rain. So this is the first sentence in our story. What is a natural way to begin? What was the organization here? Was the rain in progress? Was it finished? Um, was it for some amount of time? So make a guess, try to complete the sentence, and then we'll check. Okay, so let's see. The correct answer is, was raining. So now we open a story with the present or the past continuous. So I have my, my point in time when I woke up and then all around that, it was raining. How about another example? My friend, verb text, me, while I was asleep. All right, so my friend, verb text, me, while I was asleep. All right, you have your answer. Correct answer is had texted. Oh, some of you might have said, oh, why not text it? I'll explain. So, my friend had texted me while I was asleep, and now it's because we have our organization of time. So, here's my past simple, I was asleep. And before that, during, you know, before or inside of that time of, of sleeping, my friend texted. So, then I use the past simple because I'm putting one event before the other. I know that he texted before I woke up because I have a text as soon as I woke up. So my friend had texted me while I was asleep. Um, you can make an argument for the past simple, my friend texted me while I was asleep. Um, and that's, that's okay, but had texted is really better because it's something that happened, you know, 
while you were asleep, longer ago in the past. All right, next example. So we have the first two sentences in our story. When I woke up, it was raining. My friend had texted me while I was asleep. He, me, if I should go to the cinema. Yeah, so now we've got the next part of the story. So what do we use? Always think about the structure of time here. So we had, I woke up, it was raining, my friend had texted me, so now what do I do? What's next? Okay, let's check. Let's see if you're right. So to begin, it's he asked me if I wanted. Past simple, past simple. Because now it's just these two events. So we had, I woke up, it was raining, he had texted me while I was asleep, and so now I'm moving to the next, the next point in the past, the next event. He asked me if I wanted to go to the cinema, simple past, simple past, because there's no, no other relationship, it's just event, event. Okay, the next part. He asked me if I wanted to go to the cinema. Then I told him that I, for days, for him to ask because I wanted to see the new movie. So what do we do here? Remember what I said about for and why for is so important. Okay, so let's check. The correct answer is had been waiting, present perfect continuous. Here it is. Um, it's not very often, not very frequent, but we have one. So now I have that idea for days. I had been waiting. So. He asked me if I wanted to go to the cinema. Before that, I had been waiting day after day after day because I really wanted to see this movie. I really wanted to go and I was waiting a long time for my friend to ask. So I used the past perfect continuous to emphasize that time, to really show I had been waiting for days. All right, next. So then we to go that afternoon. Okay, so what do we do here? Verb is decide. All right, well, I think you've got this one. Correct answer is simple past, decided. Uh, because now we're moving to that next step. So if you can kind of see a pattern developing, um, we'll talk about that pattern in a moment. There's kind of a common structure to English stories. All right, number six, next one. So the story continues. We decided to go that afternoon. While we, in the queue to buy tickets, we, another friend, leave the cinema. All right. So now we need to really think about meaning. You know, what was in progress? What, what is the, the, the main point here? All right. Do you have your guesses? Let's check. So while we were waiting, we saw another friend. So now we've got that past simple, past continuous. So we decided to go that afternoon. Then, while we were waiting for those tickets, we saw a friend. So now we have that idea of interruption. So I saw my friend and it interrupted our rate waiting. It changed things. And so finally, the friend, just see. Now, yeah, be careful. I want you to use uh, this adverb just. So that friend verbs, just see, the movie we wanted to see. They said it was good. So now for this conversation, what do we do? So we were waiting in progress. We saw our friend, it interrupted. And that friend now had just seen past perfect. Because now the friend did it before we saw him. So now we're talking about this event because we saw him. Before that, past of the past, our friend had just seen the movie. And we use just here because it's very recent. You know, it, he just walked out of the cinema, so I know it's very soon. So we use a just here to kind of emphasize. Um, we can also say without. My friend had seen the movie we wanted to see. They said it was good. That's good. Um, but the word just kind of gives it more, more recent time. So I mentioned that there was a pattern. Can you kind of see how all of these tenses work around the past simple. So I open the story with the past simple, and then 
I use this to describe what was in progress and what happened before. So I have my past simple, I woke up, it was raining, my friend had texted me before, and then the next action, dunk, I change back to the past simple. He asked if I wanted to go. And then I describe what happened around that. Well, before he asked me, I had been waiting for days. So I want to emphasize a long time before, so I use the past perfect continuous. Well, the next action, switch, I switch to the past simple again, decided. And now I describe what happened later. So now I saw my friend, that was the next action, and around that we were waiting. And then finally, they said it was good and he had just seen it before. So now I'm talking about things that happened before we saw it and before he said. So that's kind of how this always works. We've got the past tense making event one, event two, event three. That's our past simple. And then these other tenses, the perfect, the continuous, the perfect continuous, are all showing different things around it, describing the situation around those past tenses. All right. I hope this helps shows how to use these all together. Now you know all of the past tenses and how to use them. So the last thing to practice is some irregular verbs. So yeah, fun, fun. We're going to do some irregular verb practice. I have 12 common verbs here. Bring, buy, fall, eat, draw, fly, see, give, know, forget, write, and throw. So all very common verbs. Throw, if anyone's unclear, is to, to throw something. Um, so let's practice the irregular. So first, we're going to do the past tense form. So this is simple past, the irregular ED verb. So I'm going to go through one at a time. And before I change, try to guess what's the correct form. So I'll start with bring. Past tense is brought. Buy. Past tense is bought. Yeah, very similar, but now we have brought, and then we have bought. Don't worry, I'll do pronunciation for each row. All right, or, yeah, column, sorry, row, column, each column. Okay, so number three, fall, past tense, fell. Eat, past tense, ate. Draw, past tense, drew, fly, past tense. Flew, see, past tense, saw, give, past tense, gave, know, past tense, knew, forget, past tense, forgot, write, becomes, wrote, and throw, becomes, through. Yeah, so we can see for these irregular past tenses, it's really the vowel that we're changing for all of these. Um, so the past tense is the most different form, the, the, the simple or the infinitive form, and then the past tense can be very, very different. Um, however, the past participle actually sometimes has a pattern. So uh, let's go through and check pronunciation, and then we'll continue to the past participle. So repeat after me, brought, brought, bought, Ah, ah, bought, fell, fell, ate, drew, flew, saw, gave, knew, forgot, wrote, threw. Uh, be careful with the th. Threw. All right. So now let's check the past participle. So bring becomes brought, and brought becomes brought. Yeah, no change. <laughs> sometimes it's the same. You know, sometimes the past participle is the same as the past tense, even for irregulars. So if these were regular verbs like walk, it would be walked and walked, both ed. And sometimes the irregulars keep the same. So I have brought something. So we use the same form. So buy becomes bought, and bought becomes bought. Again, no new form. 
So those two are the same. And then how about number three? Fall becomes fell and fell becomes fallen. So now we have the en suffix to show the participle. And then eat becomes ate, ate becomes eaten. Yeah. Now we've got another en suffix. Draw becomes drew and drew becomes drawn. Yep, that's another common pattern here to add an in form. Okay, fly becomes flew and flew becomes flown. So very similar to draw. See becomes saw and saw becomes seen. This is actually another en one. See, seen, en. Okay, give becomes gave and gave becomes given. Very good, another en. No becomes new and new becomes known. So now we have an in form similar to draw. And then forget becomes forgot and forgot becomes forgotten. Yep, another en suffix. And then write becomes wrote and wrote becomes written. And throw becomes through and through becomes thrown. Yeah, you'll notice the words that end with W often get the N sound. Drawn, known, thrown. And then others have this old EN suffix. Written, forgotten, given, seen, eaten, fallen. And so that's really how we make the past participles in English. We have those two kind of suffixes. And then we have these other ones that stay the same. Okay, so I hope that was a good, a good quick quiz to help you remember your irregular forms. So I'm just going to quickly review everything. What did we talk about today? Well, we did this big past tense review. We talked about the past simple for a finished action, past continuous for an action in progress, past perfect, an action that happened before another, and then the past perfect continuous, an action that happened before another for a specific amount of time. That's what we're focusing on there. And then we talked a bit about how they're different. Remember the past continuous that focuses interruption, the past perfect continuous that focuses on how long before one event. And then we talked about the uh, irregular verbs, and we did a quick irregular verb quiz. All right, well, thank you so much for coming for another intermediate lesson. Um, I hope you, you remembered something you didn't remember or you learned something new especially. I hope you understand how important all of those past tenses are for telling a story and how they all work together to help organize time. All right, well, we're going to continue this review series for another video because we have one more to talk about. I think you can guess uh, past, past, present, and yeah, future. We still got to review the future tenses, so we'll be doing that next. Um, thank you all so much for watching again today. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.